In this video, I'm going to address the issue of whether you should use the Welch's F-Test or the Brown-Forsyth test. It's a question I get fairly commonly from students, uh, and I think there is an answer to this question that's very straightforward, but then if you want to peel under the layers a little bit, uh, the answer is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to give you the very straightforward answer, and you can carry on with your life. Uh, but I'm also going to give you the more complicated answer if you want to uh, use this in a more powerful way. So to the question, the easy answer to this question is, overall, you should probably just use the Welch's F-Test. It'll balance uh, the chances of committing a type 1 error as well as power uh, in a fairly effective way. And I base this answer on research that is simulation in nature by Tamarkin and Serlin uh, that was uh, published in Psychological Bulletin in 1986. Uh, and they did a simulation study uh, to evaluate both the type 1 error properties of the Brown Forsyth and the Welch's F test, as well as the Kruskal Wallace and the regular ordinary uh, ANOVA. And I'll show you the uh, results with that uh, if you're interested. Uh, and so, again, going back to the question if you just want the straight answer, use Welch's F test. Overall, it'll probably be your best option in most cases. But now I'm going a little bit l deeper to see maybe it's not always the best option. Uh, so what they found is the Welch's F test here. So what we have are, is just a regular F test, the Welch's F test, and the Brown Forsyth, and also the Kruskal Wallace, and another statistic here that uh, is very uncommonly used. And in this case here, the the um, the, the number of or the percentage of statistically significant effects should be close to 0 0.05 if we're using an alpha rate of 0 0.05 and what you find is that when the variances are homogeneous which is an assumption of ANOVA you can see that the regular ANOVA works pretty well with a 0.053 uh, Welch's, of, Welch's is bang on uh, and Brown Forsyth too, Kruskal Wallace uh, a little bit a uh, little bit stricter uh, in its uh, type 1 error properties but then as soon as you get uh, unequal variances here you can see that when the larger sample size is paired with the smaller n, that's what this means here, the regular F test is uh, operating at an alpha level of 0 0.02 which is too strict but then when the larger variance is with the smaller sample size you get a blowout in the alpha rate and you're testing your statistic at a alpha of 0.167 which is you know by most people's estimation clearly inappropriate. The Welch's F test however is consistent. Look how consistent that is across all uh, levels of variance heterogeneity as well as sample size unequalness. And that's why I make that recommendation of just straight off, if that's all you want to know, just give me the quick answer. Use Welch's. The F, the Brown Forsyth, not as good because it's testing closer to 0 0.06. So about 0 0.01 extra type 1 error rate. Uh, and interestingly, the Kruskal Wallace just breaks down just like the ANOVA does when the larger uh, sample size is with the, or I should say the larger variance is with the smaller sample size, the Kruskal Wallace just breaks down uh, just like the ANOVA does. So a lot of people mistakenly believe that the Kruskal Wallace is fine when you have heterogeneity, heterogeneity in the variances and the sample sizes. That's just not true. It doesn't work. Uh, never has been claimed to based as statisticians uh, who write about these things, but there are textbooks that do. Uh, so again, Welch is very good. Now this is in relation to type 1 error probabilities. So the Welch's keeps it close, very close to 0 0.05. The Brown Forsyth close-ish, but not quite. It's always up a little bit too, uh, too liberal, rejecting the null hypothesis too often when they shouldn't. Now power is also a consideration when evaluating a statistical analysis. And so that's why I make this extra recommendation here, which is, uh, I'll, you know, before I get to that, unless average sample size is very small. So this is a bit of an important consideration, is that the Welch's F test breaks down a bit in comparison to the Brown Forsyth when the sample sizes are really small. Like I'm talking about six or less as an average across the groups. Now most people these days very rarely test those so sorts of uh, hypotheses, but they do happen, especially in animal type studies. Uh, and in those cases where you violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance and you have unequal sample sizes and your sample sizes are really small, then you're probably best using the Brown Forsyth 
because it works better than the Welter's F test in that case at keeping the type 1 error rate close to 0 0.05. Now the last issue is about power and although on the one hand the Welter's F test keeps the P equal point uh, keeps the type 1 error rate close to 0 0.05 better than the Brown Forsyth there's also a trade-off for power and the Brown Forsyth is actually more powerful consistently than the Welter's F test which you would expect based on the type 1 error behavior of both statistics. But what's interesting is that on average the the advantage of the Brown Forsyth over the uh, Welch's test is about point it can be point zero two point zero three extra benefit of power associated with the Brown Forsyth depending on how your means are different from each other. So if there's an extreme mean associated with uh, a, a different pattern of the variances. So you can see here EX1, EX pattern with mu, the extreme mean applicable in unequal sample size homogene, uh, homogeneous variance cases and all heterogeneous cases. It's really quite a, a mouthful. And how I summarize this table is that yes, the Brown Forsyth is more powerful than the Welch's by a small amount but something that's not you know totally trivial but the brown forsyth is also more prone to type 1 error rates so it's a trade off and so what i recommend is if you want to try this as a rule this is something i would consider is that if you're prepared to use alpha 0 0.04 instead of 0 0.05 then you might be best to use the brown forsyth test probably in most cases if you're interested in having the most amount of power and also not rejecting the null hypothesis too frequently. So instead of using 0 0.05, you'd have to use 0 0.04 because the way the Brown Forsyth works uh, when it comes to type 1 error rates is that it's a little bit inflated. So reduce your criterion for alpha and then use the Brown Forsyth and you might eke out a little bit extra power whilst also keeping your family wise or type 1 error rate closer to 0 0.05. So in summary, overall, use the Welch's F test. It'll keep the type 1 error rate close to 0 0.05, and it's a pretty good deal when it comes to power, unless your sample size is less than 6-ish. Uh, in that case, you're pretty much left with using the Brown Forsyth F test. Finally, if you want to squeeze out as much power in your analysis, use an alpha rate of about 0 0.04 to overcome the issue of Brown Force liberalness but then you get the maximum power as well by getting the Brown Forsyth F test on your uh, as your analysis. So there's the answer, the short answer and the long answer.